The popular Latino rapper known as Big Pun has died. His real name was Christopher Rios, and he died of an apparent heart attack at White Plains Hospital. He was only 27. Yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy, See Through The Script here, back with another video. And today, we're diving into the life and passing of a revered artist hailing from the Bronx, known for his exceptional lyrical talent and unforgettable persona, Big Pun. For the hip hop heads, the name Big Pun can never be counted out when discussing the best of that era. Despite his relatively brief career, he made a lasting mark not only on the Latin rap community, but also on the hip hop genre at large. Quick disclaimer, we're all familiar with the detrimental impact that excessive weight gain can have on the human body. This video aims to delve into the intriguing numerical synchronicities surrounding Pun's passing and the narrative surrounding it. It's crucial to bear in mind that numbers can be manipulated for ritualistic purposes, but there's also the natural numerical framework. So as I go through this decode, you could form your own conclusion whether this is a case of ritualistic numerology or an organic alignment. With that said, let's talk about it. Born Christopher Lee Rios in the Bronx, New York on November 10th, 1971, Big Pun initially displayed athleticism during his early years. However, his relationship at home took a turn in his early teens, prompting him to leave his house at the age of just 15, eventually leading him to drop out of high school. During this period of his life, Big Pun faced considerable challenges. He found himself homeless and already a young parent with his high school sweetheart, Liza. Regrettably, like many who grapple with the weight of life's harsh realities, Christopher turned to overeating as a way to divert his mind from the pressures of parenting and providing for his family. However, during this time, Pun wasn't nearly as large as he would become before his untimely passing. At just 16 years old, his love for music and hip-hop culture began to shine through his ability to freestyle with densely packed metaphors and intricate rhyme schemes at such a young age. It's worth noting that Big Pun wasn't his initial stage name, he actually used to go by the name Big Moondog and was part of the Full Eclipse crew, gradually gaining recognition in the Bronx. However, Big Pun's path to success was far from swift. At the age of 18 in 1990, he married his high school sweetheart Liza, and Christopher, also known as Big Pun, faced the substantial responsibility of providing for his wife and daughter as a young man yet his music hadn't yet yielded the success he needed. Performing tirelessly at bars and clubs throughout the city, he eventually caught a break when he was introduced to the fellow Puerto Rican rapper from the Bronx, whom we all know as Fat Joe. In 1995, Fat Joe invited Pun to collaborate with him on the track Watch Out, featured on Fat Joe's second studio album, Jealous One's Envy. Though only a year older than Big Pun, Fat Joe had already garnered a bit more attention for himself through his collaborations with the Diggin' in the Crates crew, a collective that included hip-hop luminaries like Lord Finesse, Big L, and many others. This opportunity to collaborate with a fellow Puerto Rican artist marked a pivotal moment in Big Pun's music career. With the Terror Squad led by Fat Joe gaining traction in the industry, it was only natural for Pun to become part of the squad. After all, the resemblance between the two went beyond music, they could easily pass as legitimate brothers, sharing the same ethnicity, build, and exhibiting similar rhyming abilities. During this time, Christopher transitioned from the name Big Moondog to Big Pun or Punisher, drawing inspiration from the Marvel comic character, The Punisher. In 1996, just a year after joining forces with Fat Joe in the Terror Squad, Fat Joe introduced Pun to label owner Steve Rifkind of Loud Records. Loud Records played a significant role in hip-hop. Interestingly, Steve didn't even need to hear a demo from Pun to be convinced. He felt the endorsement from Fat Joe was enough. During an interview with DJ Vlad, Steve recounted that Joe played a freestyle for him the day before his introduction to Big Pun. The very next day, Fat Joe brought Big Pun to the office. At that time, Steve shared an office with Mateo Glenn, the man responsible for signing artists like Mob Deep and Dead Prez. Although Mateo rarely showed up to the office, he made sure he was there when he heard Steve was meeting with Big Pun. It was right then and there, they extended a quarter million dollar record deal to Big Pun, which was an offer he couldn't refuse. 
two years after securing that monumental deal, Big Pun, with the support of Terror Squad Entertainment and Loud Records, unveiled his debut studio album, Capital Punishment, on April 28th of 1998. This groundbreaking release ascended to the top of the R&B and hip-hop albums chart and secured the fifth position on the Billboard 200. It swiftly earned platinum status, catapulting Big Pun into the spotlight and even earning him a Grammy nomination. This achievement solidified Pun's legacy as the first Latino rapper to achieve platinum status. But with great success often comes a shadow, casting its presence over artists. Sometimes it's financial woes, other times it's entanglement in street politics, and on occasion, it's an artist's overall health. It came as no surprise that Big Pun, a large individual, reached an astounding 400 pounds by the young age of 26. Recognizing the peril to Pun's health, Fat Joe encouraged him to embark on a dieting journey, leading Pun to enroll at Duke University's diet program in North Carolina in 1999. Thankfully, Pun managed to shed 80 pounds, yet regrettably, the weight loss proved to be temporary. Pun quickly regained the 80 pounds that he lost and was steadily adding more by the day. It was getting to the point where Pun was having issues handling day-to-day -day tasks due to his weight. Others have even stated that he had a bed in the studio so he could lay down in between recordings. By the year 2000, Big Pun's name grew widely known in the hip-hop community, receiving love from both fans but also the Puerto Rican community as Pun never shied away from his cultural identity. At this time, Big Pun's home was undergoing renovations, which led to Pun and his family to stay at the Crown Plaza Hotel in White Plains, New York. On February 5th, Big Pun was scheduled to perform alongside Fat Joe and Jennifer Lopez, but didn't end up showing up, stating he wasn't feeling well, understandably so. Tragically, just two days later on February 7th, Big Pun was pronounced dead at 3.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, according to multiple sources via Rolling Stone and MTV News. It was reported that Big Pun suffered from a heart attack right in front of his wife Liza. He was rushed to the White Plains Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. This news of course made major waves through the hip-hop community many torn to hear that the big lyrical machine had tragically passed away. Big Pun was only 28 years old at the time, and as we often notice, rappers tend to have a very short lifespan. Whether it be due to violence or health-related issues, it seems too common to lose great artists before they even reach the age of 30. Using the practice of English gematria, stemming from Kabbalah, aka Jewish mysticism, we could see how the synchronicities between the letter, the number, and the date numerology all tie together to outline interesting patterns not shown to you by the mainstream. So the first thing I wanted to point out is that Big Pun died at the young age of 28 years old, and as you can see, his stage name and age of death written out have a two for two match in the base ciphers, with the exception of the 96 and 69 being mere reflections. Still focusing on his age of death, it's worth noting that the word kill equates to 28. Now I'm not explicitly suggesting that Big Pun was deliberately killed, though it's always a consideration when delving into the shadows of the music industry. industry room and I did find it interesting that he died at the age of 28, considering the phrase ritual sacrifice equates to 107, the 28th prime number. It's crucial to bear in mind that labels tend to reap substantial profits from posthumous releases. In a somewhat twisted manner, this provides an incentive for labels to elevate an artist to superstar status, especially if the individual is already exceptionally talented, as in the case of Big Pun. Unfortunately, this could culminate in their untimely passing, allowing both the labels and associated parties to maximize profits. Big Pun was no exception to this pattern, as his album reached the third spot on the Billboard 200 charts and subsequently attained platinum certification. 
Continuing with the 10728 connection, it's worth noting that Pun's wife, Liza Rios, carries the numerical value of 107 in the reverse ordinal. This holds significance as she was reported to be at the hotel with Pun when he passed away. Here you could see that Big Pun died exactly 9 months and 3 days before what would have been his 29th birthday. Remember his stage name Big Pun equates to 93 and the reverse ordinal. Big Pun was a large individual and it was reported that he passed away from a heart attack. Interestingly, heart attack equates to 72. Adding to this synchronicity, the date of February 7th, which could be written as 7 2, aligns with the number 72, fittingly coinciding with the cause of his passing. Once again, it's evident that Big Pun regrettably struggled with obesity, largely due to his unhealthy eating habits and alcohol consumption, both of which significantly contributed to his weight gain. It's worth noting that the word obese equates to 89. I found this particularly noteworthy given that Big Pun passed away exactly 89 days after celebrating his 28th birthday. This is another one of those synchronicities that really just have you wondering. Alright, now when it comes to decoding celebrity deaths, especially among rappers, the number 38 consistently emerges due to its association with words like death, murder, killing, RIP, and rapper. Notably, Big Pun passed away on the 38th day of the year. This aligns perfectly with the words I mentioned earlier. Expanding on the 38 connection, it's a well-known sentiment in the industry that these music labels often have shady dealings. It's quite fitting that the label that catapulted Big Pun to fame, Loud Records, equates to 163, the 38th prime number. Additionally, we noted that Pun passed away on the 38th day of the year. Indeed, Big Pun's most significant musical achievement was his debut project, Capital Punishment. Released on the 28th of April, this detail is important as it seems to foreshadow the age of his eventual passing. For instance, his biggest album dropped precisely 28 weeks prior to his upcoming birthday. Furthermore, the lead single from his debut album was released on October 14th of 1997. If you calculate the time span from the single to the album's release, it turns out to be exactly 28 weeks before the launch of Capital Punishment. Then exactly one month prior to the album's release, Pun dropped a remix to his lead single titled Still Not A Player on March 28th. This remix turned out to be the pinnacle of his commercial success in his career. He later passed away on February 7th, leaving 328 days in the year at the age of 28 years old. It's quite a series of 28s, if you ask me. It's worth noting that it's not uncommon for those who hold influence behind the scenes to tie an entertainer's passing to a moment that contributed significantly to their popularity. In addition to all of that, the album Capital Punishment was given the 128th spot out of 200 by Rolling Stone's greatest hip hop slash rap albums of all time. Emphasis on the 28 as well as the 128 as Big Pun's other moniker, Big Punisher, equates to 128 in the English ordinal. A couple more interesting numerical findings surrounding Big Pun's biggest album also lies behind the title itself, Capital Punishment, which happens to equate to 201, a very infamous number on this channel that ties directly to none other than the Jesuit order and the Order of Illuminati, which was founded by a Jesuit. As stated several times, the music industry is flooded with JEWs and Jesuits. For those who have done their homework, it's known that the Jesuits are comprised of several JEWs that converted to Christianity but secretly were practicing Judaism, specifically Kabbalah. This has many wondering why the current Pope 
who is the first ever Jesuit pope, wears what appears to be a yarmulke, but is commonly referred to as a zacchetto within Catholicism. Lastly, while touching on the album Capital Punishment, Big Pun, or shall I say Big Punisher, died exactly 650 days after the release of his greatest project. No, Big Punisher equates to 65 and the reduction cipher. As mentioned earlier, labels and affiliated parties, including executive producers and alike, often benefit from posthumous releases. There has been speculation about Fat Joe's potential involvement in Pun's passing. While it's true that Pun had health issues, still, some found it suspicious, particularly in light of the strained relationship between Pun's wife and Fat Joe regarding the handling of Big Pun's royalties after his demise. In an Instagram dispute that went down when Liza, Pun's wife, saw a clip of Fat Joe speaking with rapper Nori. Discussing the contract Big Pun had signed back in the day, Nori was defending Fat Joe, stating that the contract that was signed was standard practice within the industry at that time. But Pun's wife stated otherwise, stating in the comments, quote, Joe, want me to apologize to him for me going after what was rightfully my family's, asked Rios. Quote, he is responsible for over 2.3 million in royalties that was never paid to Pun. It's all in the court papers all public info, end quote. In an interview with Hip Hop News Uncensored, Liza Rios and her attorney, Lita Rosario, delve into the complex matter of Big Pun's life insurance policy and how it was managed by the labels. Lita, her attorney, states that Loud Records indeed did have a life insurance policy on Big Pun, which even Liza understood why, but in the course of their audits, they have been facing difficulties in determining who ultimately received the funds, as it's evident that it did not reach Big Pun's wife and his children. Meanwhile, apparently Mr. Fat Joe is... In this case, yeah baby, Big Pun's first posthumously released album was executive produced by his mentor, Fat Joe, and dropped 57 days after Pun's passing. It's intriguing that Fat Joe also equates to 57, displaying a numerical link between Joe and this project. Additionally, I calculated the days between the release of Pun's second album and what would have been Fat Joe's 30th birthday at the time. Turns out, they were 137 days apart with 137 being the 33rd prime number. It's worth noting that both Fat Joe and Big Pun sum to 33 in the reduction ciphers. Earlier, I mentioned how the number 28 seemed to weave through Big Pun's rap career. Well, his second album was released only two months after his passing, and it boasts prime date numerology of the number 28. So let's just add that to the stack of 28s from earlier. It's also worth noting that there are some who genuinely believe that Fat Joe may have known more about the circumstances surrounding his close friend's passing, even going as far as to suggest that Pun was intentionally harmed. It's interesting to observe that the word kill equates to 28 as mentioned before, and the number 44 in the ordinal cipher. This album was released on 4 slash 4, like the number 44 of the year 2000, which had prime date numerology of 28 as well. All right, but here's another mind-boggling observation for you. Showcasing yet another instance of synchronicities through gematria and date numerology. According to multiple sources, Big Pun was pronounced dead at 3.53 p.m. on February 7th of 2000. Interestingly, when you write out the exact day, month, and year of his passing in words, it equates to none other than 353 and the reverse ordinal, mirroring the exact time of his death. It's worth mentioning the day, month, and year written out in words also equates to 137 in the reverse reduction cipher. And you may remember that I highlighted a 137 connection earlier, and here it is again. This number being the 33rd prime number holds significance in numerology, as well as in Freemasonry and occult traditions. It's intriguing to note that Pun and his mentor, Fat Joe, both shared this numerical link. Additionally, it's important to acknowledge that Fat Joe played a pivotal role in helping Pun get his start, further emphasizing their connection 
through the number 33. Now something that's been observed time and time again on my channel is that artists often experience loss on their journey to the top, trading it for a potentially longer career filled with fame, wealth, and status. In 2023, it's clear that Fat Joe seems to have reaped the greater rewards. Unfortunately, there's a dark underbelly to the entertainment industry where individuals might be coerced to sacrifice something or someone of profound personal significance for worldly gains. And many have speculated that for Fat Joe, Big Pun was his Faustian bargain. It doesn't help that Fat Joe's label waited exactly 666 days after the death of Big Pun to release another album. We all know the significance of the number 666. Plus, Pun and Fat Joe were both from New York, which equals 666 in the Sumerian cipher, which works in increments of six. Furthermore, his album, Jealous One Still Envy, a sequel to his second studio release, was launched on December 4th, 2001, leaving 27 days remaining in the year. It's worth noting that Big Pun passed away on February 7th, a date written as 2 7, mirroring the number 27, which interestingly has close ties to the word ritual. Once more, the question remains, was this merely a series of coincidences, a manifestation of the organic matrix in action, or was it all meticulously orchestrated? When discussing these two artists, both hailing from the Bronx and proudly representing their Puerto Rican heritage, it's noteworthy that Bronx, New York, and Puerto Rican have a 3 for 3 match in the base ciphers, and from a statistical perspective, the Bronx is home to the largest Puerto Rican population in the United States, further solidifying the alignment between numbers and reality. One more observation worth noting is the alignment between Big Pun's third posthumously released album, Endangered Species, and his stage name. As we've seen before, his second album, also released posthumously, had a direct connection between the date and his real name. But in the case of his third album, which coincidentally dropped on the 3rd of April, marking the 93rd day of the year, aligns perfectly with his stage name, Big Pun which as you might recall, equates to 93 and the reverse ordinal. Now it's important to remember that while artists are alive, they typically don't have control over the timing of their album releases. However, considering Pun had already passed away, it appears quite evident that those behind the scenes responsible for releasing his music posthumously were engaging in some form of number manipulation with these releases. But with that being said, y'all, I think it's time I wrap this one up. I want to say RIP to Big Pun. He was most certainly a legend of the genre of hip hop and will continue to be remembered for his lyrical ability. Also, a big shout out to my supporters. I really appreciate y'all for rocking with me and staying patient for the next videos. It always means a lot. Another shout out goes out to those that made it to the end of this video. And if you did, you guys know the drill, man. Don't forget to drop your boy a comment, smash the like button, share the video, and most importantly, subscribe, man. Remember, all of those things are free to do. It's been your boy Script, and I'm out of here. Peace. Peace.